My body language buddies, can't you spot the signals of a narcissist when he wants to come out as a victim of the circumstances? Well, we're gonna see a great example of that in the Daryl Brooks case. Welcome back, my battle language buddies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the battle language guy. And uh, this case, uh, Daryl Edward Brooks is accused of killing six people when he drove his SUV into the Waukesha Christmas Parade on November 21, 2021. He is charged with six counts of first-degree intentional homicide, for which he pleaded not guilty. He will be uh, representing himself during the trial. Not only was uh, six dead, but uh, those sense of people uh, injured. Um, he was just detained on, on the spot, and well, this is his uh, trial. He's gonna represent himself, and you know what they say, that uh, anybody that represents uh, himself has a fool for a client. Uh, this is a, 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 a train wreck. I'm going to call it just before the analysis. This is just a train wreck, but we're gonna be spotting both his battle language and his words, his arguments. So, n deconstructing and analyzing every word and sentence he says, uh, to spot those patterns. This is his opening statement. Um, obviously, I don't have any uh, rehearsed or well, <coughs> well prepared speech, so I'm just going to speak from the heart. Well, that's the first signal. He says that he's going to speak from the heart, you know, to. Um, come out as uh, spontaneous, that he's not has not prepared anything. He wants to come out as a human that is not scheming or um, like his argument. He's going to claim that whatever happened at Wokesha was not intentional. So he wants this to be spontaneous too. Um, I would just like to first say that uh, I want to bring to remembrance something I, I think everyone in this room has been taught uh, pretty much as far back as we can remember is that there's always two sides to every story. Um, and for so long now, uh, roughly a year, there's only truly been one side told of this story. And okay, that, that is uh, the two sides of a story. It's usually an argument that, uh, well, you can have when someone tries to claim that you are seeing this, this is not what you think has happened. You need to, you need to hear my version. And uh, any person with a certain degree of empathy with the slightest degree of empathy would agree on that. Well, okay, you did this. Uh, well, certainly not in this case because uh, we have this um, repugnance reaction. We have this anger reaction to what he did, what he effectively uh, did in this case. He is trying to go for the, well, you need to hear my version of the events. And of course, he's trying to look that it was not uh, on purpose, that it was uh, an accident, that, um, uh, well, all sorts of things, but he is resorting to our natural willingness of listening to that second version, his version of the story. What is, what, when, what happened that we don't know, that is the benefit of the doubt, but in some cases, a manipulator can use that same principle to fool you and to lie to you into hearing their own version of um, of the story, even if you are witness with your own eyes that well, the, they did something something wrong. For example, uh, I've sat back and watched um, from countless narratives that, that, that's that been put out there, um, the way this <coughs> incident has been portrayed at times, and uh, finally, uh, everyone getting a chance to get the full story. Now, I, I, I'm sure that you have already noticed that he's taking too much time to talk. Like, he actually did not prepare anything 
for his opening statement. Uh, that is a signal, that is actually a signal of narcissism, but it, because in this case, he is not afraid of just wasting everyone's time. Like, uh, uh, this should be succinct. Uh, it's gonna take like roughly 12 minutes on this, uh, and he's gonna cry a bit, by the way. Uh, but imagine that in those 12 minutes, he took 12 minutes to talk, and most of that is most of that is pauses, and maybe a bit of a word salad here and there. He is uh, not afraid of wasting everyone's time. He's not afraid of. He's he's taking his time. Maybe he he likes that spotlight. He li he likes being being there. That is a common trait in narcissists. So that could be another signal. You won't hear me try to uh, argue facts. Um, the fact is, it, this incident was tragic, very tragic. Something I want to uh, point out is the way that he's, uh, he has some kind of asymmetry on his face, and I'm gonna, gonna, gonna call it an asymmetry, uh, because he does it almost all the time, so it could be part of his natural baseline, his usual body language expression, so we can say that he's speaking from contempt uh, because he's he's doing that all the time. A person cannot be uh, talking from contempt all the time. Uh, so that, in that sense, that kind of gestures we can, uh, we have to discard them because they might be, we are not sure, part of his usual body language. So, to avoid any bias in the sense we, for now, discard that gesture. Uh, notice to that, uh, that he said, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna argue uh, about facts. I mean, you're not gonna argue about facts, then why did you plead like not guilty? The facts is what you did. Okay, you're gonna, wh what exactly are you gonna argue about? Wh why are we here? Again, he, it's obvious that he did not prepare anything, he doesn't know what he's doing, and... Uh, well, let's continue. The fact is, it, this incident was tragic. Very tragic. You don't say. That's not lost on me. That's not lost on me. He was the perpetrator. The incident was tragic. He's, he's talking in general terms. It uh, was tragic for the families. He doesn't say that. He, he will never say that. The incident was tragic. Whatever happened uh, was tragic. Notice that uh, these uh, manipulators use uh, these general, vague terms, uh, not specific, not personal terms, just to, to talk about what they did. Um, facts are that There's still a lot of people healing, uh, a lot of families healing, on both sides. Uh, both sides, yeah, because uh, his side of his family is uh, still is still healing. You know, his family who has not lost everyone uh, or anyone, uh, and the families that actually lost people and. Uh, uh, a lot of them were injured too, so it's it's pretty much the same for him. It's treating everyone as the same. And when I'm confident that uh, the evidence will show, um, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. Let's talk about the evidence. Uh, I think it's enough uh, witness evidence uh, to. Well, he, he knows what's coming to him, talks about the evidence, so he gets a little emotional. Maybe that's what he had prepared. He wants to act the part, so it acts as a victim, maybe. Uh, we'll see what's going on uh, just only two minutes into this. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. But I'm confident that the evidence will show. Is that this incident was not planned. This incident was not intentional. And this incident was never even thought about. 
it's easy to What do you think about that last statement, that if uh, that incident was not on, on purpose or was not thought about or was uh, was just uh, a, a rush of the moment, is he less guilty for that? Is he... Um, I'm, not, I'm not that keen on the legal side of things, but I'm more on the common sense and practical side of things. And you know that a jury sometimes, for example, that doesn't have that that legal uh, side, but have the common sense side, the citizen side. What do you what do you think about this? Will he be less guilty if this was not planned? If he just did that because, well, he had this certain rush or certain impulse to do it, would he be less guilty? I know that there are these, um, these crimes, like, like uh, this uh, emotional love, pa passion crimes uh, that are pro product of an impulse by the moment, maybe, but what can be the trigger here? Like he ran, he ran with a with a vehicle into a, a lot of people. What can, what can, what could be the trigger here that justifies such an action uh, out of the blue? I'm sorry. Just need a second. Uh. He thinks more than Elaine. Elaine Bredhoff on Amber Heard's case. He, he doesn't have a clue. He should have prepared Think for this. Uh, he's, he's waiting for the tears to come out, you know, to, for the drama and the stuff. It's easy to look at the magnitude of something like this. And Empty words, filler words. He's trying to protect his inner victim. Pains. I think, uh, <coughs> it's easy to disregard a lot of a lot of factors we don't know which factors it, speaking in general no uh, details whatsoever it will be the moment to say them but there are not and I think uh, in reference to what I stated earlier it's, it's easy to forget the other side of the coin Again, uh, speaking about his side of the, the, the conflict, his family, his, uh, well, what, what what was going on? We want to know. Any details? There, there's been a, a lot of suffering involved in this incident, a lot. Obviously, um, with the families. He begin to cry, yeah, this, this is what he was expecting. I think he's really thinking. He has this, I wanted to point out that this, uh, this contraction here, I would like to know what my fellows at uh, the behavior panel say, but I could say that, well, usually when we have a true sadness, not only our inner eyebrows rise, but they also press together against each other. And there's this conflict between the, the muscles of our brow that our brows not only uh, rise, but press against other and there are two sets of muscles one that rise and one that lower and they uh, contract the, the, the both sets contract at the same time so the pattern you get the pattern you get is very similar but it's not quite this you should you should see um, in real uh, the, the sadness of this magnitude uh, vertical, uh, just a just a, uh, just a vertical uh, wrinkle in the middle between the uh, eyebrows. Of course, you see that you see you see that, that those marks that the eyebrows are raising and they are, but they should push together, push to each other at the same time. Thing that is not happening here. I will look, I would love to 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 know the behavior panel's take on this this exact uh, emotion, this uh, this display on his face. With the, with the community. <laughs> I 
and uh, even the alleged, the alleged defendant's uh, family as well. There's, there's been a lot of suffering. That 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 we already know. You already said that before. A lot of misunderstanding. Yeah, misunderstanding. What what did that we we did not understand? I don't know. <laughs> we would like and, to know. Uh, I just want you to keep in mind uh, everything that will be uh, presented in its totality. To keep in mind. I, I don't know. We have the idea that he doesn't have any witnesses at all. The power that you have. Well, he's going to bring some Amber Heard grade witnesses. Please God, no. That was excruciatingly boring. Again, same gesture with his eyebrows. No, I don't see real sadness in the air. I believe uh, that should escape your, your knowledge. Yeah, that's what witnesses are for. You're aware of that, right? Ooh, this is this has been a long process for, for everybody, and, and it's gonna be a long trial. I see for everybody too. At least he brought his gray suit, so as not to bring too much attention to himself. And what I believe is uh, informal and uh, when it's time for you to make your decision, all of you. believed it and I pray that it's the right decision <laughs> yeah he's, he's put, put in the ball in the other person's court it's something that narcissists do manipulators do toxic personalities do is that I hope you make the right decision like he he just screw up with his life and he's expecting the, the people, the rest of the people to well make the right decision this time. Uh, it's yeah, ha kind of uh, hypocritical and that is uh, something not surprising in this kind of events. But that could catch you off guard if someone tries to pull that off on you in real time to your face like this person is telling me that and again your empathy our empathy works against us in those cases because you will seriously consider hey yeah I, I have to be mindful of the right decision here I can't just uh, well make a verdict or a judgment just like that uh, because I'm not like them all right, you begin to think, I'm not like them. Uh, maybe they are a bad person, but I'm not a bad person. I have uh, judgment. I will take my time. I will be fair because I want people to be fair with me. I will be fair with them. Uh, sometimes that just doesn't, doesn't work. And in fact, most of the time with these people, these people get away with whatever they do is because they try to make uh, everyone around them guilty of well whatever they did well you will feel guilty if you don't make the right decision about my case this is what he's stating so this is the focus he's he's uh, he's making um i can't say that he's doing this on on purpose because i think uh, it's too all over the place this is as i told you a train wreck he is doing this more for the drama more for the um, uh, inspiring pity uh, to play the victim like he's trying to like balance the fact that his side of the coin that his family that his version of the events is equal suffering which is nonsense of course but he, that's what he's trying to do at that moment imagine that there's, there's been a lot of words thrown out there no, this is going to be worse. The alleged. Worse than Amber Heard's trial. A lot of speculation, a lot of ridicule. Words like demon. 
Where it's like mustard. <laughs> Public service announcement, never uh, represent yourself in a trial. Never. A bad idea. This is embarrassing. And he likes that. He's like he's liking it. He's liking that the spotlight. He's liking it every single second of that. I know uh, a lot of the time I've been before you. You've you see me with this mask on. <coughs> yeah, I've had my reasons for that, but I feel now is the time to. It's important that you see before who I am. No mask. Yeah, that, that's another um, tool that they use. Uh, don't look at my action, uh, my actions. Look at who I am. Okay, and in fact, uh, your actions define you. That that is that is that is the, the the reasoning behind your actions because. Uh, uh, you can connect your actions directly to the person. You can connect the actions directly to the person. But manipulators are going to use some kind of a strategy like this. Like, don't look at what I did. Look at me as a person. Uh, do, do you think that... I, I, can't you imagine that I would do something like that without provocation, without a good reason, without being mad at the moment, without being uh, a, a, a sudden burst of insanity. That is not me. Look at who I am. So they will they will do this, separate themselves from their actions, like their actions are a product of their own character, of them, themselves. This is important because it's a recurring tool and can be used in many ways, in many... Uh, yeah, in many ways, in many verbal ways, many, many paraphrasing this, but uh, it's important to identify that separation. Look at who I am, not what I did. Okay, and they sometimes do use this uh, in the other way, telling you that you are better than this, you are better than whatever reaction you have. Uh, this is not the way you rea usually react to things. You are much more um, uh, serene, much more uh, fair than this they will manipulate you into this like you are overreacting you are that is not you you never overreact you always take things uh, th uh, think things clearly even if they did something that yeah it uh, uh, it it forces you to act in a way and say hey uh, i can't stand this anymore even if those moments they will try not only to them separate themselves from their actions but tell you that no, that is not the that is not the real you. That you are you are overreacting. You are more kind. You are more understanding. You are. We have been happy together. That that is something they trying to uh, uh, make that separation between the person and their actions, both, both in themselves and in you. For who I am, I think this is the moment for that. I pray that you're. Uh, Your eyes and ears remain as open as possible. Yeah, our eyes and ears are open, but not not getting the message. I understand that you alone decide this case, this matter. It is your responsibility. power is in your hands all of you you are the one responsible of the outcome you are the one to who has to determine for yourselves well. <coughs> what truth is thank you So, well, this is not going to be the last uh, video I analyzed from this case, rest assured. There are other clips, especially when he begins to, well, like, threat the judge and many shenanigans. And I will be reviewing that on other 
uh, episodes. My Battle Language Buddies, my name, is, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Battle Language Guy. And remember to download my 100 Battle Language tips right in the description of this video. Much love and bliss.